Hi everybody, this is Joe Ramirez here. Um, this is a video on how to both design and prep your models for laser cutting. We'll be making our models in Rhino using then a plugin from Autodesk called Slicer360. I'll make sure to put more information on where to find that uh, in the description below. And then after we use Slicer, we'll be moving it to AutoCAD where we'll put a couple final tweaks and then you can send it off to the print lab um, for laser cutting. For our first step, we'll be making our model in Rhino. Now I realize that you guys haven't quite gotten to this step yet, may or may not have, so I'm going to run through a simple example of how to make topo in Rhino. Now beginning with our line work, as you can see, um, I do have a 3D model here, but this was originally my flat line work on just Rhino. I've made a series of lines only using polylines and control point curve. Okay, so we're going to start off making a simple model in Rhino out of line work. As you can see, I've made a demo one ahead of time, but for those of you who haven't been able to make models like these on Rhino yet, I'll be making a small test one for you guys to see. So, on the bottom here, I'll be taking a polyline, and I'll just draw out a small boundary. Um, after this, I'll be taking a control point curve, turning on my O snaps at the bottom so it meets the line, and then just drawing a simple curve. Let's do three terraces. Okay, now that we've got our topo, as you can see, it's completely flat in perspective view. Right. We'll be taking each line. I'm going to be moving them up, say, a quarter of an inch. So 0.25 inches up. We'll be grabbing the lowest topo, moving in again, 0.25 inches up, and then 0.25 inches up. In the 3D view, you can see that that is now the framework for our topo. Alright, so the first step in completing our topo terraces, we're going to make sure we have O-snap on at the bottom, and we're going to snap to the lower terraces end of the line here. After that, I'm going to turn O-snap off, hold shift, and then start moving the line towards the next corner. We'll be moving this, as you can see in the perspective view right now, we're holding down shift so that the line doesn't end up at the bottom like that. Um, once the line points down at the corner like that, it messes up the entire uh, terrace, so you have to begin again. So holding shift, we'll make sure it reaches the end. We'll go to each corner so that it creates almost a slice, if you will. Once you get to the other end, of our terrace line, we're going to hit O-snap on and make sure it clicks to the end. And then complete our line. As you can see, that's created an entire layer for uh, us to make more topo out of. So I'm just going to hit join and make this one entire curve. We'll repeat these steps for the other two layers. Again, clicking towards the end holding shift and turning down our O-snap. And once we get to the end of the line, hit O-snap again. Make sure you click to the end and finish your layer. Grab that line, hit join, and you've got another cohesive layer of topo. Let's finish with the last one. And there are your four layers of topo, foundation included. So, after you reach this state, we are going to be practicing using loft on the big demo model. Once you guys get to this stage, we'll be using mostly surface tools. On our surface tools to our left, we're going to be using a tool called loft. Um, Loft is a great way to create smooth um, hills and layers like this out of predetermined lines of topo. So we'll begin 
by choosing one side to locked. We'll be picking these group of lines, hitting enter. And then once you do that, you'll be met with these arrows. Moving these arrows to the corner just by clicking and dragging or clicking and putting them at their designated corner. This is the seam that the loft will be made out of. So if the seam is unorganized, it may cause unnecessary strain on your computer when it's generating the loft. So I like to have it uniform on the right like this, with all arrows pointed in the same direction. Once you have it here, you press enter, and we'll be met with uh, this command board. Now, the styles don't really change very much. Um, what I like to do is I like to use tight, and then I like to rebuild with a specific amount of control curves, because if you have too few control curves, say 10, and you hit preview, it won't be stretched out to the outer boundary of each topo, as you can see here. It becomes rounded and sort of lazy, and it doesn't translate to a good model. So I uh, advise you to play around with the control points and hit preview. Make sure it reaches this little corner here. I'm going to go ahead and hit 50. So it's a nice little sharp curve here, at the very least. After you're happy with your loft command, we'll press OK. And this becomes a poly surface or a surface. Um, for the surface, we can go to Solid Tools and hit Cap, and then that'll cap both the tiny hole at the bottom and give it a flat surface on the bottom. After you've completed that step, we can move on to the other side of our model. Once again, we'll be taking Loft, selecting our curves, adjusting seams so that they're all at the corner uniformly and as I can see some of the arrows are not pointed in the right way so we'll be able to adjust that um, in the next step after you do that because our arrows were weird it becomes this very interesting piece of topography that will probably not look very good in a laser cut. So let's align curves. We'll be taking these arrows and just clicking on them, adjusting which direction the scene is going to go. As you can see, that fixes things right up. And once the arrows are all uniform, so is the loft. So we'll press enter. Again, we'll be building with 50 control points with a tight style. The preview looks fine, so let's hit OK. And there we go. Um, we'll be doing another cap as to, er, to cap the hole at the top and the hole at the bottom. There we go, we've got two sides here. For any in possible indents that you guys might have, um, any swales or of the sort um, that requires digging into the actual foundation, what we're going to do, we're going to be making a surface out of the foundation using surface from planar curves. We select the foundation line, as well as the line right before your hole begins, and pressing enter. That way it makes a surface without covering up your hole. Um, after that, the process is still the same. We take locked, we take this bottom curve and this top curve, press enter, make sure the seams are fine, which in this case they seem to be. Press enter again, press OK. And then for the curve at the very bottom, we just surface from planar curves. There we go. Now that we're done remaking our model, I like turning off the surface ISO curve just to get a nice little feel. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to be taking our model, going to hit File, Export Selected. As you can see, I've already saved uh, a demo file, but just for um, clarity's sake, let's just save this as demo2. And we're going to save this as an STL, a stereolithography. Okay? 
After we save it, we'll be getting a mesh export option. Now it's going to give you uh, a number in the inches, and this is your tolerance. Um, as far as how this affects the final product within Slicer, um, honestly, I have no clear understanding of how it works. I know that adjusting the tolerance to, say, 0.1 inches will make the file way bigger than 200 inches, um, which may create some more issues um, generating the model in Slicer. But if you have a tolerance of 200 inches, then it may or may not be as entirely accurate when it is generated um, in Slicer. So this is always a hit or miss, um, just uh, just a trial and error basis. Um, if your file doesn't work in Slicer right away, um, go back here, adjust your tolerance, say to 50, to 100, to 0.1 inches, to um, a hundredth of an inch. Uh, we press OK. As you can see, you'll be getting an approximate size, uh, always hit binary. Um, the smaller this is, the easier it'll generate um, within sl uh, Slicer. We'll be hitting OK, and the file is saved. OK, so now that our Rhino file is done, we can minimize the program and go ahead and open Slicer. Once Slicer opens, we can hit Import and start looking for our file and open it. And voila, there it is. Now, the next part is important for A, where you're getting your laser cuts done, and B, what material you're using to get your laser cuts. If we go up here and we hit the pencil icon, you'll see a list of sizes and sheet sizes. So we'll be hitting this plus, and I will be measuring this to how the EMV print lab um, requires its laser cut sheets uh, for laser cutting. So their maximum sheet size is 18 by 32. And the thickness will depend on what material cardboard or chipboard you're using. For our sake, let's just go ahead and put an eighth of an inch or 0.125 and hit done. After we've done that, in this dropdown, we can select our custom. Uh, I'm using unnamed one because it is essentially the same measurements. I've just done this before. And then we're going to select a technique, which is the stack slices. Now, our model disappears, which is no biggie. Um, for some of you, your model might instantly materialize. Um, for others, it may be an issue with the tolerance, like we mentioned earlier, um, or that the size is too big. Now, that's just playing around with the tolerance, or you can go here to Modify Form and click Shrink Wrap, and just little by little apply Shrink Wrap to your model. And what that'll do is it'll simplify a couple curves on the model itself, but it'll get it to a point where the shape will be be able to be generated within Slicer. See? So now we've got our model all nice and sliced. And each of these slices is an eighth of an inch. So we'll get to that in a sec. So after we get our model like this, we can uh, start adjusting the slice direction. Now, slice direction just means um, which way which direction your model will be sliced in. So by default, it just comes out on top, one on top of the other like this. But if you go to slice direction, you can pick which axis to um, turn it. We'll be choosing just the blue one here and then hitting 90 degrees and hitting reset. And as you can see, the model is still sliced, um, but in a different direction. It's The layers are all on top of each other going upwards instead of front and back. Um, slicing in different directions has different advantages. For example, cutting sideways like we had before will show a little more of the fluidity of topography, whereas slicing up and down like this will show each layer in its entirety, but it also may mess up a couple elements like our cut in the corner here.
So you can adjust this however you see fit. And already on the right here, we can see the two sheets of chipboard that we'll need to buy and send to the EMV print lab for laser cutting. Um, this is important because the more sheets that you have on the right here or on the number here, the more you'll essentially have to pay to um, build your project. So sometimes, you know, maybe it'll be a little bit better to have more sheets so you get a more accurate model. But if you're looking to save money, which I know many of us are, um, adjusting your slice direction and reducing your amount of sheets um, will help save your wallet some hurt. Once you're happy with um, how your model has been sliced, we can go down here and check the assembly steps. As you can see, this is a literal walkthrough on how to assemble your model once you receive it. Um, once you laser cut your model, as you can see on the side here, it'll be laser cut completely out and then etched in with a number. Each of these numbers, um, as you can see, uh, beginning with one, two, three, four, moving to five, and then five one and five two just mean that they're at the same elevation, but they're two different pieces. These are each side of our little model. So for example, if we move up ahead a little, we can see that this part coming in is five one, and then the next part is five two. They're at the same elevation, we're just building them in different steps on different sides. After you check the assembly steps, you can go down here to get plans and you'll see the overview of the sheets. We'll go down here, adjust it to PDF, and then export to my computer. And after that, we can name it our demo file and hit save. After we're done with that, we can exit out of Slicer and move to AutoCAD. Okay, so now that we have the file open by using uh, PDF import, we will be designating the cut and etch lines depending on where we are getting our model printed. Now, for the, in this particular case, uh, I'm going by the EMV Print Labs settings which say that anything red will be cut and anything blue will be etched. So what I like to do, I like to use command select similar and this will let us grab anything of the same color. Now because we want blue uh, to be red and red into blue, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select all of our blue, hit enter, right? And we're going to actually give this a middle color. So I'm just going to pick green and then we're going to do the same command select everything red including any stragglers just in case make sure everything red is selected and then we're going to switch all of the red lines to blue because blue will be etched and not cut all the way through the material this will help us see which um, parts are next and also aid in the cutting so We'll repeat select similar one more time and select all of our green objects and go ahead and turn them red. And now this will fit the EMV Print Lab's requirements of anything red will be cut and anything blue will be etched. Uh, once you get to this stage, you can go ahead and save it. And the Print Lab suggests that we save it um, as a DWG uh, AutoCAD 2015 or below, so a 2013 will suffice. And just save your file. And there you are, you're good to go. Um, this process, uh, again a recap, uses polylines and models within Rhino through Slicer to AutoCAD and then this file will be the file that you use to um, laser cut with your sheets at the print lab or um, wherever you'd like. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, good luck with your projects. And I will also be helping your TA Osmond, uh, at least in Rennie's studio, with the other version of this, which is just purely using AutoCAD to uh, get to this stage and get your models laser cut. Thank you, and see you soon.